welcome to Tom Padula TV and uh, to another interview with a very special guest, uh, Calvin Thompson, Member of Parliament uh, in uh, our federal national uh, venue, right? And he has uh, been looking after Wills, the city of Wills, for a very long time, since 1996, I believe. Yes. Uh, we come together occasionally because I am one of his, uh, uh, of the people who well, cast a vote. And today, <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, Calvin Thompson uh, what he's been doing this year. I know that uh, he was uh, Secretary uh, uh, for Trade uh, earlier on in the year, and now he's uh, Secretary for Schools. So, a bit of a change, uh, but I will let him uh, tell us. Um, what he's been doing since our last interview. Calvin, welcome. Uh, thank you, Tom. G'day. It's, uh, it's good to have the opportunity to talk with you again. Uh, earlier this year, I was uh, appointed by the former Prime Minister, Julia Gillard, to be Parliamentary Secretary for Trade. Uh, in that capacity, I engaged in a trade outreach program designed to encourage Australian manufacturers and exporters. I believe that Australian manufacturing is extremely important for our national prosperity and well-being and uh, the the outreach program took me to uh, Hong Kong, to Indonesia, to Taiwan, uh, then later on to the Pacific Alliance Summit in Chile, well the Pacific Alliance Summit was in Colombia but I also visited Chile as part of that uh, trip and more recently to Mauritius with the Indian Ocean Rim group of countries, the Regional Alliance. And so uh, in doing that, and also in, in terms of domestic work, uh, I visited uh, Australian manufacturers in uh, places like Brisbane, the Gold Coast, Newcastle, Sydney, uh, Geelong, Bendigo and, and Melbourne uh, to look at what our manufacturers and exporters are doing uh, and to provide relevant assistance to them through Austrade, the Australian Trade Commission, which has a lot of skills and expertise and experience and capacity to help people. That's fantastic. Before we, we go on to a question about schools, whilst you were travelling around, I instead travelled around here at um, the Intenia Booksellers yes. uh, place uh, looking after my small business and I can assure you that from uh, this part of the equation, uh, the economy uh, hasn't been looking uh, very good for us, uh, for the small business sector, and I've been thinking quite deeply about uh, the relationships uh, uh, between individuals and governments and institutions. Uh, and uh, I've sort of gone back, and you can see from my books over there, uh, that uh, I've been in the company of Machiavelli and Rousseau, Voltaire, Montesquieu, uh, and a little bit of uh, the Whitlam years, uh, sort of a, a recapping uh, what has gone on here in Australia since 1975 under Labor. Now, a lot of promises over the years. Uh, there has been uh, an incredible change in our society. Uh, things have moved on, but uh, they don't seem to look too well because inequality, as Montesquieu and Rousseau, especially uh, Rousseau, used to say, there is inherent inequality in all of our societies. What are you going to do about it? Well, I, I think that in terms of inequality, some of the key drivers of, of opportunity uh, are education, uh, obviously, things like health and, and uh, decent retirement incomes are important, but uh, I think education is extremely important and it's one of the things that the government uh, has sought to focus on. Uh, you make a valid point about uh, small business but I think it's also fair to say that uh, the Australian economy has come through the global financial crisis in much better shape than a lot of uh, comparable OECD economies in Europe, the United States and the like where we have uh, low unemployment, low inflation, low interest rates, AAA credit rating and low public sector debt. Now that is not to say that everything is, is rosy in the garden for all businesses. There's no doubt that uh, we've had this multi-speed economy where the, the mining sector has been going gangbusters but other sectors have been finding it more difficult. And you're also right to point to the fact that 
uh, we do live in a time of very rapid change and uh, the, the internet uh, and all the associated changes have been dramatic and remarkable and I'm sure they impact on things like um, book publishing and book sales and, and, and there's no doubt that we live in, a, in very rapidly moving times where consumer ch tastes change rapidly. Mm. Uh, well, one of uh, the major reflections uh, from my point of view, uh, you know I have been a teacher so I've taught in a lot of classrooms where uh, equality uh, of um, performance and outcomes uh, depended very much on uh, the type of students you actually had in your classes as well. And now as a small business operator for the last 10 years since I retired, uh, I've looked at this uh, a lot more closely and I found uh, that uh, in our society, it's a bit like in my classroom, uh, that there are inequalities that um, depend on uh, a lot of factors. So I grant you that and I grant um, not only the Labor Party, the Liberal Party and the Greens, everyone who goes into government is going to find it difficult to manage the great variety of uh, existing performance factors uh, in our society. It's always important, Tom, to have a balance between producers and consumers and uh, I think that it, there is a very important role for governments in relation to consumer protection because you often get great inequalities of market power so that uh, if a person is involved in a, a dispute with a large organisation, uh, could be a, a state-run organisation or a council, but it can also be a private sector organisation uh, like a bank, like an insurance company, like an electricity company. Uh, these things can be very difficult for the consumers and they do need assistance. At the federal level we have the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission. Uh, at the state uh, level you have the uh, Consumer Affairs Bureaus and those sorts of bodies have a really important role to play in our community to make sure that uh, consumers are treated fairly and aren't disadvantaged by some large organisations which do from time to time exercise market power unfor unfairly. That's, uh, that's something you pointed to in your remarks and that's true. But it's also true to say that sometimes some of these institutions will find themselves on the wrong foot. In other words, if, if we all stop uh, putting our money into the banks uh, and, or we don't try to save anymore or we don't try to use uh, their services, uh, obviously uh, you know, the banks will uh, will contract uh, as a as an industry. The energy companies, if I switch off all my all, all my uh, uh, lights and etc., uh, then you know, f less use uh, for them. They can find themselves in uh, some trouble as well. So, the, the, this balancing act is needs to be uh, needs to somehow. Uh, like our democracy, <laughs> we need to look after it and make sure that the balance is always there. Now, do you believe that whether Labor is in power or the Liberals are in power, uh, there are the checks and balances for these things in government circles? Uh, look, I think that, that uh, governments do try pretty hard to get the balance right and you're, you're right there needs to be scope for uh, the private sector to make a profit but there also needs to be safeguards against exploitation. I think we've had a pretty good um, uh, business investment climate frankly. We've had a, a trillion dollars of investment by the private sector in Australia since uh, the Labor government came to power and there's something like 268 billion dollars worth of projects in the pipeline so I think we've had a, a pretty good investment climate for business with the, the low inflation and the low interest rates and and the AAA credit rating that I mentioned before and 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 we're an area Australia is a country which has uh, comparatively low uh, taxes to GDP ratio and comparatively low uh, public sector government sector if you compare us with other OECD countries comparable countries we have uh, lower rates of taxes and lower rates of public sector spending. So I think that with, there's plenty of room in the Australian economy for the private sector to, to make a profit and to flourish.